so <clears throat> Uh, section A, I have shared with you uh, PDF files load carried by beams and yesterday I uploaded a phylogenetic analysis of W beams. So this uh, PDF file which I am going to discuss today uh, you can find in your files folder. Moreover, in uh, recordings folder <coughs> In recordings folder, you can find uh, two hours or one hours recorded lecture on the topics which we have covered up till now. And one last topic was load carried by beam. And uh, I mentioned at the end of lecture that I will discuss bar bending schedule. And uh, it is present in that uh, PDF file at the end of the file. But actually, when you will go through those uh, steps, you will find that there are some bars which are on top. There are ties as well, shear stirrups for shear. So I want to cover the other type of uh, beam uh, cross sections and as well as beams which are having steel in compression domain in compression zone and then shear design of beams so once i will finish these topics then i will discuss bar bending schedule so bar bending schedule we will cover at the end when all these uh, reinforcements we have covered and Dr. Safir will also discuss uh, T beams, the monolithic beams in our RC slab construction and then slabs one way and two way. So I think it will be more suitable to cover the bar bending schedule at the end uh, since we also have to discuss the continuous beams which will be combination of all type of beams what we are going to discuss uh, under the phylogenetic design and shear design for various type of beams singly reinforced with what I have covered in chapter 3 and now in chapter 4 I am going to discuss uh, from this reference book doubly reinforced beams or shallow beams and it is in chapter four and dr safir will discuss with you uh, t beams and edge beams so it is also present in chapter four and then finally continuous beams so now we are actually discussing contents from chapter four and uh, I mentioned you to solve the problems in chapter 3 with reference to uh, singly reinforced beams. Obviously, in chapter 3, there are some problems which are with reference to uh, other type of uh, elements. So, but uh, only with reference to singly beams, you need to solve the problem so on google book you can also find few pages shared of 2020 edition of uh, the part one it is fourth edition published in 2020 concrete structures by z Sadiqi and mcgregor and other books like nilsson are also important for thorough understanding or uh, detailed study about the contents. So let me now discuss doubly beams from chapter 4. Then I will come back to the calculation of the steel weight. So as I mentioned in chapter 3 also beams and then beam supporting one way slabs, beam supporting two way slabs, 
wall supported by beam so these topics i have discussed online and recordings are shared and then this bar bending shed rule i will discuss this at the end of chapter 4 so i will record today's lecture so 25 students are online at the moment so the topic of today's discussion is doubly reinforced beams beams which are having steel not only on the tension side but also on the compression side so if this is neutral axis and we have the steel in the tension domain so also we are providing steel in on the compression side so such kind of beams are called doubly reinforced beams so beams having both tension and compression reinforcement to allow the depth of the beam to be lesser than minimum depth required for singly reinforced beam so it means when we are going to proportion the cross section you remember that for singly reinforced beam we derived one equation and we decided that if d minimum will be greater than or at least equal to mu over 0.205 so this equation we derived fc prime into bw so if we are keeping the effective depth of the beam greater than or minimum equal to the right hand side we will get the behavior singly reinforced so presence of the steel on the compression side will be like hanger bars they are not much stressed in compression their contribution will be small in compression to generate the compression force their purpose will be to hang the ties to hang the stirrups for shear resistance so when we are unable due to some architectural uh, restrictions that we are not allowed to design beams with large depth so we have restriction on h or d and serviceability requirements are not violated because you have seen that if serviceability for example demands span by 16 our d minimum requirement as singly to design it under reinforced tension control may demand h by 12 so so the minimum depth required to design it as under reinforced tension control is always demanding more than the serviceability requirements so serviceability requirements we are not allowed to violate because otherwise deflections will exceed at service loads cracking will begin however we may reduce the depth but then if we are reducing the depth within the permission given by serviceability but that reducing reduction in depth is actually violating the singly reinforced requirement that it should be under reinforced tension controlled 
steel 0.005 when concrete crush then it means if i will still design the beam as singly reinforced i will end up with the transition reinforced either or i may enter the over reinforced domain so it means if you are not providing d greater than d minimum and still you insist to design by singly you may end up with over reinforced singly beam which is unacceptable so what will be way out when depth will be reduced we will be providing steel on the compression side to get compensation and additional couple between tension steel and compression steel and as a matter of fact we want that beam to be still designed as under reinforced tension controlled doubly beam so still we want warning steel yielding on tension side excessively till finally the failure will take place on the compression side so we still want that steel on tension side would be at 0.005 or bigger when finally concrete will crush on the compression side but now not only concrete is present on the compression side steel is also present so the only difference will be depth of such beams will be less than what we require in case of singly reinforced beams so by using lesser depth the lever arm actually reduces and to develop the same force more area of steel is required so solution is costly so if i talk about the material cost yes decreasing the gross depth will reduce the concrete volume so cost of concrete obviously will reduce but on the other hand steel is costly so providing steel also on the compression side not only on tension side but also on compression side will increase the weight of steel and as well as cost because steel is costly and in this way we can state that doubly beams are costly than singly reinforced beams however ductility will be increased by providing the compression steel so it means doubly beams are more ductile than <coughs> singly reinforced beams furthermore hanger bars which are mandatory to hang the ties or stirrups so when we will discuss shear design of beams you will notice that not only on the bottom at two corners we must have two hanger bars on top to hang the shear stirrups so if steel has to be provided there and it is acting like a hanger bar that steel now in doubly beams can be utilized as compression steel thus reducing the cost up to certain extent so there will be dual role of those bars they are not only acting uh, to generate the compression force but their purpose also is to hang the stirrups for high rise buildings extra cost of doubly beams is offset by saving due to less story height so this will be one advantage of doubly beam in high rise buildings that if you have a deep beam it is consuming your clear height 
for example if you have a 1 meter beam it means if you still need a clear story height of 3 meter so 3 meter plus 1 meter will give you a story height of 4 meter so it means in every story 1 meter is taken by the beam depth so in this way if there are some restrictions on the overall building height above the road level so within that maximum allowed height of the building you will be able to add less number of floors compared with a building in which shallow beams are present and they are not consuming much of the story height for example in contrast if there is a beam uh, there is a slab system in which the beam depth is 0.5 meter it means every story height will be then 3.5 meter three clear requirement clear story and 0.5 taken by the beam drop so it means after once you will have the total height allowed you will divide the total height bit 3.5 and in other building you will divide total height allowed by 4 so you will get some compensation in case of the building with 3.5 story height because you may be able to add more floors and floor is always one additional floor is in long term if you uh, judge it will be a costly uh, uh, it will have the i would say its uh, additional floor will give you more capital in terms of if it is it will be rented you will get more rent if it will be sale out you will have more number of floors so in this way you will get extra benefit one once you have the shallow beams and you are able to put more floors in that building <clears throat> in case of double reinforced beams compression steel presence on the compression side will also help you to minimize the creep and shrinkage of the concrete because volume of the concrete in the compression domain is less and concrete is prone to creep and shrinkage and then as a result deflections are increased long term deflections so if you have replaced some volume of the concrete with the <coughs> steel it means long term deflections you are also going to reduce by providing the steel bars in the compression domain so this is a big advantage of uh, w beams that creep and shrinkage deflections are reduced are less as compared with singly reinforced beams use of doubly reinforced section has been reduced due to ultimate stance design so this is just one comment that in usd now we are able to fully utilize the material strength so concrete up to its failure and steel also up to its yield limit we are using in our capacity resistance so even with the singly beams by using full material strengths we are able to get more movement resistance so hence it is mentioned that its use is now little bit reduced due to usd which fully utilizes the concrete concrete strength but as a matter of fact its total 
uh, you can say application is not yet uh, restricted even now doubly beams are quite common and in tall buildings where we want to reduce the creep and shrinkage deflections we want to improve the ductility as it was stated ductility will be increased so we have no other choice except doubly reinforced shallow beams now we know very well that in singly beams when they are under reinforced tension control warning we get by excessive deflection yielding in the steel bars distress on the bottom cracking sag and then finally crushing and failure will take place on the in the beam due to crushing of concrete on the compression side in case of doubly beams keep in mind that tension steel will always yield so we will such proportion the doubly beams that tension steel will yield at failure we are not planning to design the doubly beam as over reinforced doubly beams even in doubly beams we are making sure that tension steel should yield when failure due to crushing on the compression side will take place so tension steel always yield in under reinforced doubly beams and in new design we will be preferring under reinforced doubly beams so there are two possible cases in under reinforced doubly beams that in these cases you will notice that we are ye kaun se will okay so in in this uh, in this case one doubly beam tension and compression both are at yield at ultimate condition very easy to analyze such beams behavior wise we are able to fully utilize the steel strength not only on in on the tension side but also on the compression side case 2 doubly beams are acceptable but in case 2 beams what will happen compression steel at ultimate when concrete will crush is not yielding on the compression side however tension steel has yielded and we will get warning but in comparison with case 1 we can say compression steel is is underutilized because we are unable to fully get its yield limit still warning and ductility we can get but in comparison with case 1 it will be giving us less warning or you can say comp uh, compression steel full strength will not be utilized for both cases case 1 and case 2 now we want to derive the equations and we want to determine the capacity of a doubly beam so first we will talk about the analysis capacity review of doubly beam capacity analysis of case 1 doubly beam capacity analysis of case 2 doubly beam and then we want to discuss design of doubly beams so in capacity analysis you are well familiar with the section of singly reinforced doubly beams so the only difference here is that in doubly beam you will get steel on compression side 
and its location from top edge from top fiber which is maximum stressed in compression the distance of center of the steel from top will be mentioned with the letter d and superscript prime so effective depth d is the distance from top edge or from the top compression fiber to the center of the tension steel and d prime will be the distance from the top compression fiber to the center of compression steel rest dimensions b and h are same strain diagram is also linear and question will arise that in that strain diagram which will be linear plane section remain plane when concrete is at failure what is the status of steels as i mentioned in case 1 w beam compression steel will also be at yield and we will say in case 1 at ultimate tension steel will be yielded and epsilon s will be greater than or equal to epsilon y so definitions are still same if i say epsilon s is equal to epsilon y when finally concrete will crush it will be a balanced reinforced w beam and the steel on the compression side will have some strain but still crushing on the compression side and yielding of the steel on the tension side is taking place simultaneously all those steel bars are present in the compression side but by definition of balanced reinforced condition is simultaneous occurrence of the yielding and crushing in concrete even if it is w beam we will call it a balanced reinforced w beam if we have at ultimate the condition that when concrete crushed steel was well above yield strain and even the compression steel has yielded we will call it a case 1 wb which is also mentioned here that compression force generated by steel will be as prime into fy however if at ultimate when concrete crushed steel has excessively yielded but on the tension side but concrete uh, but steel on the compression side has not yielded its epsilon s prime is less than epsilon y then we will have a case 2 wb because now we will have to determine what was epsilon s prime and multiplying epsilon s prime with modulus of elasticity we will get the fs prime steel has same yield strength in tension and compression and same modulus of elasticity <coughs> hooks law is applicable <coughs> so we will multiply the compression strain with modulus of elasticity to get fs prime if epsilon s prime in case 2 obviously is less than epsilon y of the steel so you will notice that when i will draw the equivalent stress diagram using witney's uh, uniform stress block the uniform stress block depth a 
and uniform stress of 85 percent of fc prime and its presence on area b into a as it was in singly reinforced beam is exactly same so 0.85 fc prime b into a will give me cc which was only present in case of singly beams in case of singly beams we know that the point of application of cc is at a by 2 from top and we subtract this a by 2 from d to get the lever arm between the steel on the tension side and cc <clears throat> so this was our uh, simple movement resistance equation in singly beams that t was equal to cc and t into lever arm or cc into lever arm which was d minus a by 2 lever arm we can get movement resistance here now we have one other force component because of the presence of compression steel and knowing epsilon s prime we can determine whether it is at fs prime or fy multiplying that stress with the area of the bars will give us <clears throat> cs its point of application is known to us which is at d prime from top so we can get the lever arm also between steel and steel tension steel and compression steel <clears throat> equal to t minus uh, sorry d minus d prime so now we have two lever arms one between steel and concrete other between steel and steel so the total tension steel will make couples between concrete and steel so some portion of this steel will make couple with concrete and the other of it will make couple with the steel so i may state that t will be actually equal to t1 plus t2 so just i am theoretically splitting this total tension steel into t different uh, tensile forces so if t1 is making equilibrium with cc so t2 is making equilibrium with cs so in this way out of total steel there are two couples now developed so from section you will draw the strain diagram from strain you will determine the stress diagram and then from stress you will get force diagram and knowing the lever arms we can get the internal capacity so as i said in case of tension steel we will never permit in design to have a doubly beam with tension steel stress below yield so it will be a under reinforced doubly beam or maximum it may be transition reinforced doubly beam that steel is yielded but steel strain is not 0 0.005 or bigger it is above epsilon y but less than 0 0.005 so we may have a doubly beam which is transition reinforced doubly beam but over reinforced doubly beam is as dangerous as the singly over reinforced beam brittle and unacceptable that at failure tension steel was below yield and compre on the compression side bursting of concrete and uh, a brittle failure has occurred so even in terms of classification you may classify that a doubly beam will be put in three different domains one is a tension controlled under reinforced doubly beam where epsilon s the tension steel strain was greater than or equal to 0 0.005 ideal 
or you can say a doubly beam in which the tension steel i am talking about the tension steel is greater than epsilon y but it is less than 0 0.005 so it is still a tension controlled doubly beam but now the ductility is not as good as it was in case when tension steel was above 0 0.005 but still it is not over reinforced doubly beam it is transition reinforced doubly beam but corresponding to tension steel what is happening on the compression side we want to judge whether it is case one or case two so case one means that not only tension but compression also yielded and case two means only tension yielded and compression is not yielded it's full stress limit is not utilized so <clears throat> now let's further discuss in detail case one doubly beam very ideal beam and very easy to analyze as i said both tension and compression are yielding so it means not only tension at equal to fy because in ultimate stand design in terms of stress we will limit the stress to fy even if epsilon s is greater than epsilon y maximum stress what we are using in our equations will be the yield stress so the compression is also at yield now in analysis problems first big question is where is neutral axis so in order to determine the neutral axis we will write the equilibrium of forces equation for equilibrium of forces in lang in longitudinal direction so the same sigma fx on the section we will say sigma fx is equal to zero to maintain equilibrium so it means t is equal to c like we did in singly beams but now c has further two components cc and cs and t obviously has the area in tension on the on the tension side the so total area steel on the tension side so this as don't get confused this is the area of steel on the tension side some students they make mistake they start mixing this area steel with the total steel as plus as prime so don't do this mistake this as is the area on the tension side so it is that area which is below neutral axis while now the on the compression side we have just like singly beam one cc developed by the concrete and one cs another component of compression force developed by the steel in compression since we are talking about case one on w beam so it means compression steel is also at yield so in writing this equilibrium equation our big question mark is where is neutral axis so in analysis problems as i said you will be given with a cross section just imagine i am giving you a cross section that this cross section has three number 25 bars on the tension side and two number 19 bars on the compression side and let me write here two number 19 and on this side three number 25 and furthermore i mentioned that concrete grade in this beam is 20 megapascal 
and I also mention that the steel grate is 300 megapascal. So FY in tension or compression is 300 megapascal. And furthermore, I mentioned that beam has the weight 300. <clears throat> it also has suppose the depth 300. So it is one fit by one fit. So if this is the given cross section, first thing is which will come to your mind when the such cross section is giving given to you, you will get idea that why and if this beam is simply supported, it is further mentioned that this beam is simply supported. So first thing which will come to your mind is that why the in the on the compression side rather than two number 10, which are considered as hanger bar smallest die or two number six, the least area which may be used to hang the ties. Least die bar two number six or two number 10. Why two number 19? It will give you one hint that there is extra area, larger dia bar is present on the compression side. And even the depth of the beam is also indicating that it is 300. And width is also 300 and area on the tension side is reasonable. But even on the compression side, area of steel is present. So this will be a first hint for you that I should go for analysis of this beam as doubly. Even if in the statement it is not given that analyze this doubly reinforced beam, it is simply stated analyze this beam. Even the presence of higher area on the compression side should give you a hint that it is actually a doubly beam because unusually high area of steel is present on the compression side. So first thing will be that you will start assuming that it is case one doubly beam. When you will assume it is case one doubly beam, question will arise where is A? Where is neutral axis? Because if you know A, you can get C. So let me now assume that it is case one doubly beam and let's apply this these steps to determine a and then finally to get the capacity if even if i further tell you that this depth is 60 millimeter and this is 65 so i am also telling you the distances of the center of steel from the edge of the beam so tension steel is at distance 65 one layer and compression is at d prime is 60 from top compression face so let me check what this beam is case one or case two that will help us to understand the application of these equations so first can you tell me i am using standard as uh, standard us customary bars that what is as it is three into five ten minus the s prime it is 2 into 84 because on the compression side we have two number 19 bars i'm writing this equation fy 300 divided by 0.85 FC prime 20 
and B also 300. So can anyone respond me that what is A of this assumed cross section? 6.58. How much? 56.58. 56.58 and what is C? Sir, 66.57. 66. 66, you are uh, responding? Yes, sir. Okay. Actually, uh, this is just one ac academic pro uh, problem. Uh, what I am getting the answer, it is slightly uh, not on the side which I want actually. Let me put one more bar over here. So on the tension side, because later on I will tell you why I am not uh, uh, solving this problem because let let me tell you when you got a value you got a even less than the cover of the top bar although c value you are getting which was equal to the depth which is above the you can say the cover of the top steel but i want to have a beam which is well uh, you can say doubly because the top bar I want to use their stress to a larger extent. So now I am putting actually four bars on the tension side. So let me make it four into, let me rub first. Four bars we can put in 300 millimeter, no, no problem. Now can you give me Sir, 86.56. Yes, sir. 86.58. 86. Let it be 86.6, right? And then C. 101.9. 101. 0.9. It can be one or two. No, no problem. But okay, light, let me write. 101.9 now actually you will get this these answers if you started with the assumption that not only tension but also compression steel yielded so based on this information now i am able to draw the on next slide, I am going to explain this point, but let me discuss here. Then on next slide, I will show you the same information to verify that what I am getting, am I right or wrong? So this is actually the strain diagram. You told me that if both T's will be yielded, then at ultimate, when concrete will crush, neutral axis will be at 101.9. I told you that the compression steel is at 60 millimeter. And I told you that tension steel is at 65. So 300 minus 65 will be 200 uh, 40, uh, 35 effective depth 300 minus 65 300 is the total depth i'm right Region up anyone 300 minus 65 is 235. 
please respond anyone online please say yes so no one is online at the moment जी आप सुन रहे हैं मुझे yes, okay, please, थोड़ा थोड़ा बोलते रहिए ताकि मैं चली रहे बैठे हुए so, so, making it equal to epsilon s over d minus c so i just want to check what is the strain in the tension steel and also strain in the compression steel because i assume in my equation that both are at yield and both are at yield and based on this i got a and c so this a and c should validate my assumption that my tension steel is above or equal to yield and my compression steel should also be above or equal to at yield because i started with this assumption that both are at yield so d was 235 minus c is 101.9 so can you give me epsilon s सर 0.0039 इसको आपने ऐसे किया ना लेट मी रीराइट हियर आपने 0.003 को डिवाइड किया 101.9 पर 101.9 एंड देन यू मल्टीप्लाइड इट विद d c और d c मैंने आपको बताया आपकी बीम में d है 235 एंड सी आपने खुद कैलकुलेट किया ज्यूम करके बहुत आर एट जील वट इज वन पॉइंट नाइन या आप एक सौ दो भी कह सकते हैं ब्रैकेट क्लोज तो आप मुझे कितना बता रहे हो एफ सोलॉन एस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो थ्री नाइन गुड जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो थ्री नाइन तो इट इज ऑलमोस्ट फोर वी आर लकी डेट epsilon s is greater than epsilon y grade 300 has a yield strain 0.0015 uh, 0.015 so we are well above yield strain but obviously our strain is not crossing 0.005 which will make this beam most ideal that i have the beam in which the tension steel is above 0.005 but at least this assumption that tension steel is at yield is fulfilled now let me also check the second most important check that what happened with the compression steel again i will use the similar triangles concept 0.003 over c is equal to epsilon s prime over c minus d prime because now i am dealing with the two triangles which are above neutral axis one is big triangle and then the other is small triangle both are similar because their angle is same so 0.003 over 101.9 equal to epsilon s over 101.9 minus d prime d prime was 60 so can you give me epsilon s now which if is greater than epsilon y yes, we 0.00123 oh sad very sad this 
I wanted to explain that now what we got the impression that our compression steel 0.0012 aap keh rahe hain 129 ya 13 chale kar lete is below epsilon y so as a matter of fact if at this stage you get the idea i am just talking hypothetically that if for example you got at this stage epsilon s greater than uh, i am talk sorry epsilon s prime greater than epsilon y the problem is over actually because your fy of tension and fy of compression both are satisfactory because your strains corresponding to that neutral axis depth is satisfying your assumption and your both steels are yielded so now the last step will be at once if this is true you will now let me just go through this and then i will come back to this problem again what we did is explain on this slide as well more neatly that you will check what is the epsilon s prime what is the epsilon s prime so you will write the equation of similar triangles you will get epsilon s prime like we did now what they have done on this slide so you calculated this 0.003 over c into c minus d prime and just you mentioned me that our assumed beam has the epsilon s prime 0.001 ya 13 aap keh rahe ho so this you got but on this slide they are doing they are replacing this c with a to replace the c with a they are multiplying the numerator denominator with beta 1 so it is up to you whether you want to memorize this equation in c format or you want to replace c with a and you want to rearrange the terms and you want to keep in mind epsilon s equation in this uh shape that where rather than c a is present both are acceptable but try to memorize any one of them for a quick uh, solution of problems otherwise you can consult the uh, equations but it will be time wasted if most of the time you are consulting the design aids <clears throat> develop habit of drawing the strain diagram and then driving your equation quickly because if you are uh, right in plotting the strain diagram you can quickly uh, write this equation no problem at all so what we have uh, got in our example problem that if epsilon s prime is greater than or equal to epsilon y compression steel is yielding if it is less than epsilon y compression is not yielding big no it is our case second case this second case actually i want to discuss with you but suppose we are lucky enough in our example problem and we got the first case that compression steel is yielding suppose i can make this uh, problem compression steel yielding by little modifying the given data but i am not doing this because my purpose is to discuss most you can say uh, lengthy case 2 because case 1 is just one liner because once you do the analysis you got your assumptions fulfilled you checked epsilon s prime it is also greater than epsilon y your epsilon s is also greater than epsilon y it means this first condition is okay and then you will move to the 
dissipation of internal capacity and you will get the moment resistance i am just trying to determine that what you will do suppose both steels are yielded now the time comes to write the internal capacity equation as i said e is making couple with concrete and steel so practically i will split the steel into two components that steel total steel on the tension side is having summation of t1 plus t2 so t1 will make equilibrium with cs you can choose any one t1 as cc and t2 as cs it is not very much you can say uh, restricted that t1 should be equal to cs it can't be cc it is just a practical balance so t1 with cs and t2 with uh, t2 with uh, cc agreed when you have this kind of equilibrium now write the internal movement resistance equation of case 1 like i said if both steels are yielded so what you will do you will write one internal movement resistance equation when you are making couple with compression steel other when you are making couple with concrete so tension steel making couple with compression steel and tension steel making couple with the compression concrete so it means mn1 will be you, since i stated that t1 is equal to cs so it is up to you which part of the equation you pick if you select cs Uh, compression part so cs into lever arm cs you can expand as as prime f y prime because you established that compression steel is at yield this case one incidentally in our example problem it is not so we can't use these equations but we have to go back to rephrase our equation which is little you can say lengthy but most of the cases you will end up with case 1 beam but if even if it is case 2 beam we can handle that beam without any problem and which i will discuss in coming slides so it is mn1 couple between steel and steel so you can replace cs with t1 and you will say t1 into lever arm so lever arm this one and t has a component t1 now we want to write another equation which will make the couple of t2 with cc t2 is one component of total t now if you are interested in cc into lever arm agreed or t2 into lever arm okay or there is one intelligent move over here if i am saying that t is equal to t1 plus t2 then i replace this t2 now with t minus t1 because it is one and same thing that i kept t2 on one side and i brought t total steel force minus t1 which already has made equilibrium with the compression steel subtracting from total steel minus t1 will give me t2 so this is one intelligent uh, substitution and then the lever arm is same d minus a by 2 so this will help me to involve steel everywhere in my equation so i now will expand this i will put t as total tension steel into its yield strength minus compression steel because t1 is actually as prime and it is also at yield into its lever arm so now there are two couples mn1 plus mn2 
which I can sum them up and I can write the nominal movement resistance equation by summing up MN1 plus MN2. So this is nominal. Now it is the time to call the phi as well. So knowing the strain in the tension steel, in our example problem, even if I assume that my bow steels are yielded, but my tension steel is not crossing 0 0.005. My tension steel is at 0 0.003 or you mentioned 0 0.03 and maybe 0 0.039, something like this. So in order to get the, even if I assume that my, just for sake of this uh, equation application, I assume that my, Compression steel is also at exactly at 0.015 if it is at yield, and tension steel is at 0.039. But since it is not yield, uh, it is not crossing 0.005. I have to interpolate phi, like we do in case of single EV, and based on the tension steel strain, phi will be decided, and it will be less than 0.9. And it will be greater than 0 0.65. So whatever phi I will get by doing linear interpolation, I have given you equation to get phi. You will put over here and you will multiply phi over here with this entire equation. And then this will give you actually the movement resistance of that doubly beam which is phi mn. Now at this stage, if you solve your problem and suppose your tension steel strain is suppose. I'm just doing assumptions. Tension steel strain is 0 0.06 suppose. And your phi over here will be 0.9. You will multiply this with the nominal. Both steels are at yield. Fy prime and Fy both are at yield and you will get the movement resistance. But our example, or in most cases, one you will investigate the given cross section, it is quite possible you will end up with transition reinforced case one WB. In our case, it seems it is transition reinforced case 2 WB because compression steel is not yielding and only tension steel is yielding. So now we want to discuss case 2 which is little more tough. Now in order to uh, handle the case 2 what will be the flow chart? Let me go back to that slide because it is very important. Uh, I, I will give you a break. Just, just let me finish this slide so that continuity may not be uh, disturbed. Then I can give you a break. Now, in our example problem, we concluded that our compression steel is not yielding. And we are at 0 0.039 in tension steel, but compression steel is at 0 0.0013. So our assumption that both steels are at yield and writing the equation like this is totally wrong. So we should go back to step one and we should rephrase our equation. And now what I will rewrite after doing this check and confirming, I will rewrite my equation as, because I got this idea that compression steel is not yielding. Now it is the time to rewrite the equation as T e is equal to CC plus CS and now replace this CC is 0.85 FC prime AB 
but only thing what you will do you will replace cs with more confidence now So sorry, there was a uh, little drop in connection. Now, am I online? Are you there? Yes. Are sir. you there? Okay, good. So let me just uh, re put here CC. Uh, I was telling that if suppose while making assessment of a given cross section, you are investigating a cross section. And you finally get that tension steel is not yielding. That will be a worse scenario that neither case one nor case two, you are getting a stupid kind of design in which compression tension steel is not yielding. It is over reinforced WB. That is unacceptable in new design, but in review problems, you may get, uh, counter or you may get such kind of unacceptable designs in which tension steel at crushing in concrete was below G. But we are not expecting this to happen here in our case. So now I have rephrased uh, my equation with compression steel based on my previous iteration that, that has given me hint that your compression steel can't yield at neutral axis 1.9 millimeter depth, which you are getting when both steels are at yield. So it can't happen. So I am rewriting it. And now what I will do, I will replace this Fs prime in my equation with the Hooke's law E into epsilon S prime. And epsilon S prime, <clears throat> as we have proved on the previous slide let me take you to that previous slide uh, you as i said you can memorize this equation because otherwise every time you have to consult a design aid this epsilon s prime which has the function of which is the function of a here and also d prime is to be replaced here I want to make it variable. I am substituting epsilon s prime with that equation 0 0.003, then into whatever was within the brackets. So that 0 0.003 multiplied by modulus of elasticity will give me 600. And I will get finally a minus beta 1 d over a. So if you recall, uh, this is now the stress in compression steel, and it is having the relationship with the uniform stress block depth that you want to put here in your equation which is rewritten here so you will again take a on one side and when you take a on one side from this equation main equilibrium equation you will get this shape but then put fs prime this one over here you will get a quadratic equation of a and that quadratic equation of A will give you then two roots. One root will be real, uh, positive, and distance can't be negative. So can you help me to get A value by substituting Fs prime over here 
so you just need your calculators and just first let me know what is the quadratic equation of a so that we can solve it to get the neutral axis of case 2 example problem main isko aapko expand karke likh deta hu a ya aap isme direct apne given data sub put bhi kar sakte hain lekin direct put na kare abhi iski just we want to draft equation i am replacing it with as prime into 600 into a minus theta 1 d prime over a bracket closed and then it is divided by 0.85 fc prime b you can take this denominator on the left hand side and then cross multiply this with a you will get a square 0.85 fc prime b and this a will also be multiplied with asfy you will get a asfy minus then you will get as prime 600 into a then again plus as prime 600 into beta 1 d prime so please expand this equation and give me a quadratic equation of a whether we get plus or minus sign over here in between just let me know को आप किसी जस्ट राइट ऑन वन पेपर एंड देन ट्राई टू पुट द नंबर्स इन योर कैलकुलेटर अदरवाइज मिस्टेक हो जाएगी इन बुक दिस सिचुएशन इज गिवन डायरेक्टली बट ट्राई टू कैलकुलेट योर ओन one option is also sorry that you put here 4 into 5 10 because your as was 4 into 5 10 your fy was 300 your as was 2 into 84. अगर इसको क्वेश्चन को बहुत ही क्विकली हैंडल करना है बीटा वन आपका पॉइंट एट फाइव है डी प्राइम इज सिक्सटी एफ सी प्राइम इज ट्वेंटी एंड बी इज थ्री हंड्रेड सो यू विल पुट स्ट्रेस इन मेगा पासकल एंड आई मैं इन मिलीमीटर इस तरह करके इसको री राइट कर लें और ए स्केयर देन प्लस द सेकेंड कंपोनेंट ऑफ क्वार्ट इक्वेशन देन प्लस और माइनस द थर्ड कंपोनेंट
मल्टीप्लाई मैंने इक्वेशन लिख दी इस ए को मैंने क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाई किया तो सॉरी इट विल बी ए स्केयर हेयर Now take this minus a s prime six hundred into a, then minus a s prime six hundred into minus beta one d prime a plus हो जाएगा. आप मुझे क्वेश्चन uh, बताएं तो फिर हम आपस में डिस्कस करते हैं किसकी क्वेश्चन ज्यादा एक्चुअली ठीक है तो पहले आपका आंसर आया था ना ए या सी का उसी के आसपास ये आंसर आएगा इट कॉन्ट बी आउट ऑफ द क्रॉस सेक्शन मैंने ये क्वेश्चन एक्सपेंड कर दिए इसमें बस आपने अब नंबर डालने इसके तो आपने डिटर्मिन करना एफ सी प्राइम इज ट्वेंटी बी इज थ्री हंड्रेड ए एस इज गिवन फोर इंटू फाइव टेन एफ वाई इज थ्री हंड्रेड माइनस ए एस टू इंटू टू एटी फोर सिक्स हंड्रेड ए इज आन नोन एन ए एस प्राइम अगेन टू इंटू टू एटी फोर सिक्स हंड्रेड इंटू बीटा वन पॉइंट एट फाइव डी प्राइम सिक्सटी फाइनली बताए सारे खामोशी हो गए जी प्लीज सर आई एम गेटिंग वेरी गुड एनी वन एल्स जी प्लीज एनी वन एल्स गॉट द सेम Anyone else? Uh, 
आप मुझे इक्वेशन बता सकते हो ताकि आप इसको फिर कंक्लूड करें यानी ए स्केर के साथ आपने यहाँ पर पॉइंट एट फाइव एफ सी प्राइम इंटू बी जो आप कैलकुलेट किया यस सर सर सिंपल ए के साथ आ रहा है ए एस इंटू एफ वाई माइनस ए एस ए एस डैश इंटू सिक्स हंड्रेड जी कि मुझे आपने जो क्वालिटी क्वेश्चन फाइनली अपने डाटा को इनपुट करके ये तो एक मैंने क्वेश्चन लिखी है ना ये वाली इसमें जब आपने अपना डाटा पुट किया है तो आपके पास क्या ये स्केयर के साथ कोई कॉफिशेंट है या किस इक्वेशन से आपने क्वेश्चन इनपुट किया कैलकुलेटर में तो ए आपका 91 वन है सर इस ए स्क्वायर की जगह मैंने 0.85 पॉइंट एफ सी डैश इंटू बी की वैल्यू लिखी वो 5100 आ गई गुड एंड उसमें मैंने 5100 स्क्वायर जैसे लिखा आपने जी जी देन सर इक्वल टू इसमें इसमें फिर हम राइट जी फिर हम राइट साइड पे आ गए और हमारे पास राइट साइड में दो इक्वेशन हैं जो ए के साथ हैं दिस वन एंड दिस वन जी सर इसमें मैंने ए को ना कोमन लेके तो फिर ब्रैकेट के अंदर वैल्यू लिखी है ए के साथ आ रहा है माइनस टू सेवन वन टू जीरो जीरो वेरी गुड ए के साथ माइनस आ रहा है ठीक है जी तो आपके साथ आ रहा है माइनस देन प्लीज दोबारा बताएं रिपीट योर टू सेवन वन टू जीरो जीरो टू सेवन वन टू जीरो जीरो ए एग्रीट और फिर आपके पास थर्ड कंपोनेंट जो है जो राइट क्वेश्चन की राइट हैंड साइड पे सेकंड कंपोनेंट है ए एस प्राइम इंटू सिक्स हंड्रेड इंटू बीटा वन इंटू डी प्राइम वट इज द आंसर इट विल बी इन प्लस इट विल बी इन प्लस सर मैं ना ये सारी क्वेश्चन को लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ले गया हूँ तो ये प्लस आएगा टू सेवन वन टू जीरो जीरो ए के साथ एग्रीट आपने इसको प्लस किया और थर्ड कंपोनेंट को माइनस कर लिया क्योंकि जब आप इसको वेन यू विल शिफ्ट द थर्ड कंपोनेंट टू द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड दिस प्लस विल बिकम माइनस ऐसा ही है यस सर माइनस के साथ वन सेवन थ्री एट जीरो ओके लेट मी रब दिस I will rewrite it like this that you made it plus right and then you shifted it on the right on the left hand side and with minus what you you got please repeat sir minus Once seven three seven three eight hundred eight hundred one double zero to make it more smart. We will divide off with zero. So then finally you will get a square and then. दोनों 
ये इसका विदाउट कोफिशियंट वाला भी ये सेकंड वाला भी नेगेटिव है ओके चूंकि आप आपका राइट हैंड साइड पर आपका जो ये ए इनटू ए एस है एफ वाई इज इन माइंड दिस ए एस इज लार्जर एरिया इनटू एफ वाई देन माइनस एस प्राइम इनटू 600 पास जो इक्वेशन साइड एग्रीमेंट माइनस थर्ड कंपोनेंट बस है यस सर ओके एनीवन एल्स गॉट द सेम इक्वेशन तो something like this 91 point sir it is 90.74 90.74 let me rewrite it 90.74 good and second one sir wo negative 37.6 very good we discarded that so this means this one distance can't be negative and this is our final selected case 2 neutral axis uniform stress block depth and from this a now i will calculate c value so a divided by beta 1 how much is c Sir, it is one hundred six point eight. One hundred six point eight. Eight. Good. Now, can you please tell me? Now, with this strain diagram, whatever we will calculate will be the right value because now. we have considered the compression steel below yield and we replaced f y with fs prime and now we can also calculate what is epsilon s again because still we are having one assumption that tension steel is yielded and this it will be a big uh, i would say blunder that if you are evaluating a cross section in which tension steel is not yielding a compression in force w beam is highly a undesirable cross section and in some kind of uh, stupid designs you may get such kind of uh, cross sections which are over reinforced in w very dangerous in uh, terms of their less warning and brittle failure can you now give me uh, against this c what is the latest epsilon s let me neatly draw here so 0.003 and divided by 90 uh, 106.8 and epsilon s and this is d minus c so epsilon s a and also we can write the equation for epsilon s prime now latest epsilon s prime
divided by 1 this point 0.8 is equal to epsilon s prime divided by 106.8 minus d prime which is 60 here so abha mujhe is latest ki base pe epsilon s prime or epsilon s bata sakte hain kahi hum yielding se to nahi niche chale gaye tension steel mein sir epsilon s to aa raha hai 0.0036 good and what is epsilon s prime sir wo 0.0013 good so with all this effort now we got the right strains in tension and compression steel and we are on this uh, now judgment that it is case 2 double beam now for case 2 double beam what we will do we will uh, we want to now write the movement resistance equation so what changes we are going to make here are over here i will put fs prime agreed and over here i will put fs prime which we can calculate from our strain 0.00 which is 0.00 s so we we can't say it is case 1 although 0.0013 so what is fs good but we are not at 300 for phi if you recall phi of 005 minus into s minus epsilon y as a zero and at point double zero three six so can you tell me phi here here that was the slope of that line up we are going to make question as a benighty is drunk arcade or pay और ये इसकी स्लोप थी यहाँ पर और यहाँ पर ये हमारे पास 0.65 से 0.9 का डिफरेंस था और ये हमारे पास 0.05 और एप्सलॉन वाई और 0.05 का डिफरेंस था यहाँ से यहाँ तक इससे बियोंड फिर फाइव जो है वो 0.9 हो जाता है और इसके नीचे 0.65 है और हम कहीं 0.005 से कम हैं तो व्हाट इस 5 सर 0.8 गुड 0.8 वेल डन सो नाउ कीपिंग दिस इन माइंड 5 0.8 fs prime 263 i will move back to my capacity equation so in this capacity equation now what i will do simply i will replace f y prime with fs prime and phi with 
finally this mn once i will calculate i will multiply mn with phi which you have calculated as 0.8 and you will report that this is the movement resistance of this case 2w beam which at ultimate will be at 0.036 strain in tension steel compression steel will be at 0.0013 or 12 so can you tell me the movement resistance as hamare paas hai ji 2 into 284 so we have solved a difficult case agar aapka ye hota case one to kab ki hamari answer aa chuka hota see and 263 is your fs prime then d is 235 Minus six sixty then plus four into five ten into three uh, FY of Kaji three hundred minus here way two into two eighty four. which is at fs prime which you have calculated 263 into d aapne nikala hai ji 235 aur a aapne nikala tha 106 alpha nahi sorry the pass 90.74 90.74 divided by 2 bracket closed bracket closed and finally you will multiply this with 5.9 uh, 5.8 jo apne calculate kiya or this transition reinforced case 2 wb beam to mujhe moment resistance bata sakte hain so i appreciate your uh, patience ki aapne 2 ghante isme participate kiya hai break ke bagair but i think this will help you to analyze both the cases of w beams aur isko karne ke baad ab aapko singly beam to aapko aise hi mazak hi lagega it is so simple mera khayal hai ki ab aap singly beam to aap वैसे ही एक मिनट में डिजाइन कर देंगे एनालिसिस या डिजाइन कोई इश्यू नहीं आपके होना चाहिए इफ यू हैव ट्राइड एट होम डिफरेंट प्रॉब्लम्स तो इसके मुझे आप जरा बताएं कैपेसिटी तो कितनी आई पहले नॉमिनल एंड देन Two into two eighty four into two sixty three. Excuse me, sir. G, please. Then nominal one hundred thirteen point nine. Good. One hundred thirteen point nine. चले हम इसको one hundred fourteen कह लेते हैं किलो न्यूटन मीटर. Yes, sir. और फिर आप जब अल्टीमेट पे जाएंगे तो into point eight. Yes, sir. Point eight से ninety one point one. Very good. Ninety one. 0.1 kilo newton meter is the moment resistance of this shallow beam ye 300 mm ki beam hai it is of depth 300 by 300 and now think at home later on what is the row of this beam on row now try to think कितनी है इसकी 
फिर कंप्रेशन स्टील की ब्यूरो निकाल लें ए एस प्राइम ओवर बी डी और हम नेक्स्ट लेक्चर में आई विल टॉक अबाउट दैट इन सो रो मीन्स फोर इंटू फाइव टेन चार आपके बार्स थे ओवर बी डी एंड इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू नोट कि रो प्राइम भी ऐसे ही निकलेगी बट इन द डिनोमिनेटर विल बी अफेक्टिव एरिया बट इन न्यूमिनेटर इट विल बी ए एस प्राइम एंड सम स्टूडेंट्स कमिट दिस मिस्टेक वाइल कैलकुलेटिंग रो दे सम अप ऑल द स्टील ए एस एंड ए एस प्राइम इन आवर डेरिवेशन कैलकुलेशन वी नेवर समड अप टेंशन स्टील एंड कंप्रेशन स्टील वी हैव ट्रीटेड दैम सेपरेटली इन मूवमेंट रेजिस्टेंस इन इंटरनल कैपेसिटी in even row submission you will put separately the tension steel row and compression steel row prime and we will discuss some derivations which will also help us to classify whether the beam is doubly reinforced case 1 or doubly reinforced case 2 or the worst scenario it is over reinforced double beam so like in single beam we discussed row balanced row max in double beam we can also have the row balanced and row max and also we can have one row which will tell us about the status of compression steel without going into this detailed calculation we can cl classify them by using row equations which i will talk about in next lecture so let me escape when once i will escape all this text will not be saved but in video you will get the uh, recording of all these steps so i will discard annotations so